Live from the Pepper J Production Studios in Hollywood, California, it's time for Actors Eat Chat Show. Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Now, with nearly 1,400 entertainment celebrity guests and over 6 million viewers worldwide, every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. A co-production of Pepper J Productions and Live Video Inc., a Kurt Kelly company. It's the Actors E-Chat Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Actors E-Chat Show, shot live in Hollywood, California. I'm your host, Christina Nichols, and today we're going to have an actor and producer, actor and producer <laughs> on set. Um, he got his first big break on Moesha, and he currently has a recurring role on Bones. Also, he's a producer, and he's produced films for the likes of Lawrence Fishburne. Guys, I am still waking up. <laughs> I know that we have viewers from all over the world watching at all different times of the day, but my mouth has clearly not woken up because I'm just like, as you do, yeah. Okay, let's try that again. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's early on in my in, here in LA, but um, he's produced films with actors such as Lawrence Fishburne. I did it again. Lawrence Fishburne, Zoe Saldana. Martin Lawrence, and many, many others. Next month, he has a film coming out called The Wedding Ringer, which he's acting in, and we're definitely going to talk about that, as well as his, as his many other films and projects that he's been involved in. So without further ado, so I can stop mushing my words, <laughs> let us welcome actor, producer, Trey Ireland. <laughs> well, hello. Hello. <laughs> That has got to be the worst intro I've ever done. It doesn't today. matter. <laughs> as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. Like we're having fun. We're having a good time right now. You will have a good time. Uh, you'll do most of the talking, so I won't <laughs> be like, bleh, bleh, bleh. So, yeah. How? Look at this guy. No star, see? So spiffy. Yeah. So spiffy. Trying to keep up with you. I have to be able to match you, so. We were just talking about how it's the holiday season, and we've been going to a lot of parties. A lot of talking, a lot of yeah. socializing, a lot of um, staying out late and <clears throat> getting our vocal cords scratched up from too much talking. Yeah, because <laughs> as you all can probably hear, my voice is still trying to come back from these parties and random different things. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are you an L.A. native? No, actually, I'm from Chicago. Actually, I have to go back to Chicago to freeze for <laughs> Christmas and New Year, so that's what I will be doing. Leaving, actually, Tuesday night, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. Getting the interview in before you head out and enjoy your season. Last bit of work before we go. Yeah, because in January is going to be busy promoting your new film. Yes, yes. And so as we were talking about, the movie is called The Wedding Ringer, and it will be coming out uh, Martin Luther King weekend of January. I think that's like the third weekend, and uh, that's with Kevin Hart, Josh Gad, uh, Mimi Rogers, Kelly Kuko from The Big Bang Theory. Nice. Uh, great, yeah, great comedy. It's a good piece to start the year. What's, what kind of character do you play? I'm actually the pastry chef. Ah. Um, what it is is oh, about. Oh, here's the poster for the wedding ring. Yeah, I'm not on there. <laughs> 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 not, 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 not large enough to be on there as of yet. But um, as of yet, as of yet, is the key phrase. But what it is is Kevin Hart has this company called uh, uh, Best Man Incorporated, uh -huh. and what it's for is for 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 guys out there who don't have any friends, oh. and they call this company so he will pose as the best man, and his friends will be their his best man. So within that, I, I played the pastry chef. Oh, there's you. That. Yeah, so and that's Kaylee right there. So that's me with. Did the, you get like, to be in a scene with her? Oh yeah, that's the that's the scene. That's We're the scene, in. That's yeah, the scene. I'm oh, like, well, what's sure. it like working with her? She seems really cool She's and down to earth. She's very cool. Oh my god, yeah, she is. Cause you know, um, cause people are always what they seen when you watch them on TV, Big Bang Theory. But she's always funny, just like that. She's cracking jokes, and 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 Kevin's the same way. So it just it was a good atmosphere. Mm. You know, it was no divos mm -hmm. or divas on the set. So yeah, there's Kevin right there. Uh, we did uh, about last night together, actually. Oh, uh, nice. He did. Um, I was cut out of that. It's <laughs> cut out of that. I yeah, mean, you got I mean, to but, but actually, you can see me on there. If you, if it, it's like I'm a featured extras with me and Joey Bryant. I'm uh -huh. sitting. We're having this 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 dinner, and it just pans away from me. Uh -huh. But I'm there, you know. So yeah. So it was it was a big scene that had to be reduced because of the the uh, the time frame of it. So yeah. What is the release date for the wedding ringer? Huh. The release date. The release date. Uh, is Martin Luther King Day? Uh, yeah, yeah. That weekend is the, um, 
it's the third weekend of January. I don't know the actual particular date, but it's the third okay. weekend of January. So, so go check it out. To it? Yes, ah. yeah. And you also have a lot of movies coming out on Netflix right now. Yeah, I have actually. I have <laughs> two that's on, three that's on right now. Uh, Cleaver Family Reunion. Uh, that's a good family piece. Um, uh, also, uh, 13, 13, 13, which is a thriller. A thriller. So is this a thriller or a horror? Yeah, it's like a, it's more of a thriller. The poster looks thriller. so scary. Okay, that's Cleaver. Cleveland. So Cleaver Family Union. So yeah, so that's, um, it puts you in the vein of a Tyler Perry-ish type of a movie with, with the whole family in it. And I'm coming home to deal with my family and, and, and the craziness that ensues with that. Uh -huh. And then there's 13, 13, 13, where, where I, um, it's just more of a thriller. It's more, uh, uh I guess you could say kind of horror because what it is is that these people on this particular day have gone crazy. Oh. They're not like zombies or whatever, but they've gone Are crazy. Are you a crazy person? No, I'm actually the, 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 the hero guy. I'm oh, trying to, you're the I'm hero. trying to rescue, rescue oh, my, my daughter. My daughter On that is, day, we are demons. Yeah, so everybody. That looks everybody looks crazy. More than thriller. Period. That just looks like a horror movie with the demon and the it, red it, eyes. It, it gives <laughs> you that feel. So it's very interesting. But like I said, that's on Netflix as well. And then uh, this movie, Patterns of Attraction. It looks I, like we'll get back to Patterns of oh, Attraction. We'll get back to that. Okay. Looks like we have a question. Yeah, for they course. wanted to know how he got started. How did you get started? The acting world. Let's talk about the very, very beginning. What inspired you to become an actor? What inspired me? Wow, um, being the class clown in school. Ah. You know, I will always was the kid that would that would see stuff on TV and and, and, and imitate and emulate whatever it was <laughs> and get in trouble for it because I was always <laughs> the kid who who finishes work early. I was like, you know, mm. I was always on honor roll, star roll, dean's list, whatever, and I just be bored. So then I would start messing with you. You might be trying to do your work. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. and you're like, I'm trying, and then we'll get in trouble, whatever. So I was always the class clown, clown, just like I said, doing that. So that's what started, and then. Um, uh, <laughs> in all actuality, if people can remember the Little Rascals, they called you that. Do you remember the Little I Rascals? I remember the, that. The yeah. So it was only two black kids that was on this show. It was uh -huh. like Stymie and Buckwheat. Uh -huh. And and <laughs> just go back. And so as a kid seeing another black kid on TV, I was like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And then not knowing that that's just TV, Eddie Murphy played Buckwheat on Saturday Night Live. So when I saw this character who I saw as a kid mm -hmm. who was grown, I'm like, oh. Yeah, oh, so, so, the, so yeah, so uh, so Buckwheat is is, is one on the, on the far right. <laughs> yeah, so you know what I mean. So so then Eddie Murphy played the older version of Buckwheat on Saturday Night Live. So I thought that wow, this this kid had a real career. He went from it was oh, not true. So that's what I thought. So that's like, well, I can I can do this then, you know. And, and so I was you no, know, so started making fun of different things and emulating everything I saw. So. And then did, did a teacher take notice of that and? Guide you towards that? No, I, I, I was sent to the principal's office. You were sent for to the being principal's disruptive office. In class. No one said, "Oh, Trey, you have a natural gift no. for humor and entertainment." They said you are disruptive. Maybe you should have gone in drama class. No, and see, what's the, what if I was your teacher, I would have told. And you I'm that. glad you said it because, ironically, <laughs> I was watching a bargain with Jim. Oh, is this uh, That's Buck Eddie, uh, Yeah, uh, playing Buckwheat. Playing Buckwheat. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> But um, ironically, I was watching a bio biography with Jim Carrey, mm -hmm. and Jim Carrey was exactly the same way. But his teachers did exactly what you said. So, okay, J okay. Well, if we give you 10 minutes at the end of the class, can you please be quiet and not disruptive, and we'll give you your moment at the end of the class to so mm -hmm. do whatever you want to do. <laughs> and so that's how Jim Carrey was able to, you know, continue to do what he loved to do. But not me. I got kicked out. You got kicked out. <laughs> I got kicked out. So what? Well, that's Jim Carrey. Jim. I love Jim Carrey. So me too. Mm. <laughs> yeah, what was the happen. what was the turning point? When did you discover? Okay, I could do this. In Chicago, I started doing theater. I love. So you did this I, on your own. Is it after I'm you graduated from school? No, I just started just just started to uh, sort out doing. It. Like I started just uh, looking online for different classes and different programs. And, and how were you? How old were you at this point? Mm, late teens, so 18, 19. Okay, yeah. so after high school. Yeah, so, so after high school. Oh, but we I don't have any good teacher story. No. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what really made it understandable because then extras were treated like garbage. Because, mm. you know, you start off, you know, paying your dues. So I started out doing atmosphere extra stuff in Chicago. So you work at 
12, 14 hour days being treated like nothing, cattle called into one room, you mm-hmm. can't eat with the rest of the cats, you can't talk to the, to the, to the A-listers or wh- whoever is, is, is there, but you're there, and I'm in Chicago, mind you, so it's like, matter of fact, the first one I did was Miracle on 34th Street, mm-hmm. where I was an extra, and it was during the winter time, so it was like 20 degrees or mm-hmm. lower, and we're just out there being treated like garbage, I'm like, I don't care, that's what I want to do. Aww. I want to get to where uh, these guys are, so uh-huh. you understand, you know, when you have to, you know, have that much downtime and that much stuff you have to go through, to say, okay, is it worth me doing this to finally get to that? So for me, it was like, yes. God, was and your family supportive? Yeah, absolutely, very supportive. And the only thing about it is because there's only so much they can do because it's first generation. Mm-hmm. So it's not like how you have Will and his kids totally and, different and Jake, scenario. so they go, they, mm-hmm. they're born into it. So yeah. my family is in Chicago, so it's blue collar. So they, my mother was a teacher, my father was a police officer, so no one was an actor, any, any form of entertainment. So mm-hmm. it's something I had to just venture out in on my own, yeah. And then when did you move out to L.A.? Uh, 99. Okay. And it's packed the birthday and say, you know what, forget it. I, I just have, have to be, this is the mecca of entertainment. It's the mecca of it all. So For on just, camera stuff, did you do a lot of theater when you were in Chicago? Uh, not a lot, but I did enough to where it made me feel comfortable. You know, mm-hmm. because theater is the purest form of acting. And it's the most honest form of acting because you have the audience that lets you know. Mm-hmm. See, every time you have a curtain call when the, when the play is over, people always say, oh, you did a great job. Oh, my God, you were so great. Mm-hmm. That's not when you know. You know when you tell a joke on stage? If and they you laugh, hear the response. If it's crickets, then you didn't do well. Mm-hmm. If it's a dramatic piece and they're like talking through it, whatever, then you're not doing your job. So yeah. you get the real, the yeah, real. Yeah, you can true. feel it. You can feel the energy in the space. Yeah. Now you just did uh, a play at the Odyssey. Well, the, the Wishy Bell. Oh, okay. That was the Odyssey. The Wishy Bell. Yeah, that was what. That was what. Yeah. No, the, the, the play of the play was called "Yes, God Is Real." Okay. And it's written by Donald B. Welch. You know, I, I was uh, co-starring with. Uh, yes, God Loretta Is Real. Loretta Devine. Ooh, Yes. Who is who's won an Emmy last year for Grey's Anatomy, mm-hmm. and then eight-time Grammy nominee uh, Lettucey. Um, so uh, we did that at, at the Wilshire. That's the Red Divine right there. Mm-hmm. So um, and we did that at the Wilshire Evel sold out shows, two night sold out shows. So uh, and it was great being on stage with her, center stage, just she and I. You know what I mean? Amazing. So it's, it's that, that that she was one of the original Dream Girls who mm-hmm. did the play that toured the nation. So it's just good to be How with that. How amazing period. was that? Oh my God! It's it's, it's Words can't describe it because you want to be accepted by people who you have grown up watching, mm-hmm. you know, and not only just your peers, but for her to embrace me because she didn't know anything about me. And she had to have faith in Donald Welch, who was the, the writer director, said, I like this guy. He's going to be good for it. And she was like, okay, you know, I don't know if you know her voice. Like, okay, Don, what if you say so? Okay. And so <laughs> later, as we worked together, and, and, and she actually sent me an email and, and sent me a letter saying, that I made this experience so enjoyable for her. Aww. I made her feel like she was 20 years old again. And, and, and because I said, let's just have fun. Yeah. So it's that, it's that new hunger that I have. She's been in the game for 20 some odd years, I want to tell her age, mm-hmm. but for so long. So it, it's sometimes it's work for her, sometimes it's work and pleasure, but I just want to have fun, fun with it because cause once you know it, you can just enjoy it. So I made that, or I set that tone for her. So she really enjoyed it and she let me know that, so. Great. Well, we'll be back in just a minute okay. to talk further. You're watching Actors E-Chat Show. We'll be back in just a minute after a word from our sponsors. Take your party to the red carpet level, Tinseltown style. Tinsel on the Town will add a dose of Hollywood lights, camera, and action to your next industry event, anniversary celebration, birthday party, bachelorette party, or wedding. The sky the limit. Hi guys, I'm Danica Quinn with Actors Entertainment. Tinsel on the Town and I will make your guests feel like they're attending a big Hollywood event as our professional sound and video crew mingle with the crowd and conduct fun on-camera interviews. Everyone will love to get into the act. Then we'll produce the footage into a spectacular video that can be posted on tinselonthetown.com. And for an affordable price, you and your guests can purchase an edited copy as a permanent reminder of the high energy blast that they had at your soiree. So visit tinselonthetown.com for a sample of what Tinsel on the Town can do for you, your company, or your next event. For details about hiring Tinsel on the Town, contact Pepper J at pepper at actorsentertainment.com. I'm Dana Coquin, and I'll see you at your next party. Oh, 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 
Welcome back to Actors E Chat Show. Be sure to check out our sister channel, Actors Reporter, to see a ton of other acting related interviews, including an interview with Oba Babatunde. Also, we have a discount link where you can receive discounts for many actor related items, such as Performer Track, which will help you keep your acting business in order. Argentum even offers discounts, which is great. And John Michael Ferrari, our very own cameraman. All right, guys, welcome back. So I'm here today with Trey Ireland. We're talking about his many acting experiences, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about his producing as well. We just left off talking about the play you were in. Right. And I did want to hear a little bit more about the character and, and um, the scene. Like what well, my on. character yeah. actually plays Red the Red of Divine's love interest oh. slash manager. And and with this, she's a jazz singer, and mm -hmm. she's been in the chitlin circuit, meaning that the, 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 the small hole in the wall mm -hmm. uh, places. And as a manager, I'm trying to get her to the next level. Uh, at the same time, because it's dealing with family issues, when she started her career, she left her kids. But she left them in the care of her family mm -hmm. to pursue her career. So when we're coming, so now fast forward to when we're coming back, uh, I have her, this, this, she's trying to rekindle her love, her, her relationship with her, with her family and her kids. But at the same time, they want her to stay but I have her, her finding her breakthrough job to go oh. on tour with B.B. King and Al Jarreau. Mm. So now she has this crossroads of, do I stay? Do I go? So, yeah. And doing theater, you really got to just be in the scene with her. Yeah. And how was that experience, especially in comparison to doing, you know, film and TV work with other actors? But it's it's theater versus TV. Well, the, the, good, the, the good thing and the bad thing about theater is it's live. Mm -hmm. So is if you make a mistake, you have to know how to, to keep it, it moving and, and and the main thing oh, with that yeah that's from the that's still that's so that's loretta that's lettuce who's just you no know, uh eight time uh grammy nominee and that's me on, on, on the side um um but yeah it's it's because my whole thing even with even with with, with plays is like there's no rehearsals in life <laughs> so we so you might make a mistake hey you made a mistake with the, with the, oh, the thing earlier so it's okay <laughs> so people who come to see there there everybody knows people are flawed so mm -hmm. if you commit to the mistake and just keep it moving you'll be fine and and, and so that's what happens a lot when you just it's just organic like for instance and Donald Welch if he's watching is pretty still mad about this the opening night um because we didn't have a full dress rehearsal and I wear suits in this play and so I was I wasn't there for the scene, it was a scene with me and Lor Loretta and I, and I was still changing clothes. Mm -hmm. The stage manager, for some reason, cued the doorbell. So when Loretta goes to the door, I'm not there. So the whole audience is sitting there like, if she opens what? the door, it's like, ah! and there's nobody <laughs> there. I'm, the, I'm still in the dressing room changing. Right, right. So she and Pro like, well, I guess it's been a midget because I ain't seen nobody out there. So the, <laughs> now the audience is laughing, whatever. And so they look at me, Trey, what up? I'm like, I'm getting dressed, whatever. <laughs> so I got to run downstairs, go to the stage, and when I get on there, so now the doorbell rings again. Uh -huh. I open the door, I'm like, so I just improv. Hey, babe, sorry, I, I was double parked outside. I was the doorbell, I just know I was here. Da -da 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 -da. Just, oh, just you improv. just went with that. And then I said, uh -huh. so how's Jackson doing? Oh, they fall God. back into right the scene. Right back into the scene. And so everybody gets engaged. But yeah. we, yeah, but, but to Don, the director, right, he yeah. was livid. <laughs> Where were you? I can't believe it. So yeah, that's Donald Welch mm -hmm. right there. So yeah, that's 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 big. That's the Don Father I call him. So well, yeah. that's a great example of how to handle those type of situations. Yeah, like I was saying. So it's but see with acting, like you said, with with movies or TV, they say cut, let's do it again. Right. So on stage, you don't have that luxury. Which is fun, exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. It's exhilarating. Looks like we have a question for one of our chatters. Yes, I want to thank all of our actors e chatters from all over the world. We're here Monday through Friday live, and you can see all of these shows if you go to actorse.com. Trey, we have a chatter from Toronto. Toronto. Yes, Christina mentioned something about you having a recurring role on Bones. They, and they would really like to hear about what it's like to be on that show. It's, I was it's just going to get there. Good job, ah. Chatter. I literally, that was my next question. Ah. <laughs> it's a, it actually is a, and you know, people always say things is good, things are good, but that's actually a really good show. I mean, they take care of everybody there, and, and the, the atmosphere is good, and, and uh, me, and um, uh, uh, I can't, is, we just have a good time, because uh, I'm talking about things I can and cannot talk about, but, um, it's just fun. I guess. So sometimes you go, you do, you do different works and different jobs where it's not a job. 
ironically, get sidebar, like I was watching Kobe's speech after he passed Michael Jordan for, for the points, whatever, and he's been in the league for 19 years, and he said, I never worked a day in my life. Mm. Meeting on the court. Of course, you work, you practice, you work oh, hard, yeah. whatever, but once you're doing what you love to do, mm -hmm. it's not a job. Like, that's how I feel. It's like when you work, we work with certain different people and, and different experiences, it's like it's not work. You're it's enjoying just, your day and getting things it's done. It's whistle while you work. It's mm -hmm. having a good time. And so that's what it is on Bones. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's Tell us about your role on Bones. Well, I'm another FBI agent, so, uh, I, you know, I just... Um, Whatever cases come up, you know, we just investigate and, you know, mm -hmm. do the research on it. So it's typical FBI stuff. So you played manager, you played FBI agent. Do you like playing more the, like, professional type roles? I like roles that have substance. Like, um, I was actually speaking with Pepper J. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this role I, I uh, played, well, I was a crackhead. Oh. And uh, it's just, it's just um, uh, this TV show pilot that, that's actually being shot right now from Stars, Showtime, whatever called. Pimp 24-7, mm -hmm. and the acronym for pimp is papers in, paper in my pocket. And and that role... Um, Here's our the poster. Yeah, it's with Gary Sturgis, it's with Tommy Davidson, it's... Uh, yeah, so, it, it, yeah, it, uh, and, and um, uh, oh my goodness, yeah, that's for me. Um, with some red eye makeup. Yeah, so <laughs> that, that's in our, our rehearsal, so we're, uh -huh. we're just talking about the scene right now, but... Um, I like to get further away from myself, mm -hmm. and that's the be best, best, better actor you can become. Is the better, the more you take on challenging roles that don't identify with yourself. So you, you know? do enjoy tackling characters. Oh, absolutely. Do you d develop a character history? Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, I, I speak with the writer, director, mm -hmm. because if they haven't developed it, then I would look because it has to come from a real place for me. Mm -hmm. I actually, um, I actually did this this play called. Um, this this play called AIM, and it was uh, it stood for the acronym stands for Angry Insecure Man, mm -hmm. and it's a true story about this woman who has been through these many different domestic abuse relationships. But then the acronym also stands for the names of these guys. So AIM A was for Aiden, I was for Isaac, and M was for Marcus, something mm -hmm. like that. And so she was so we, it also was being attention to to domestic violence and trying to stop that, especially after the Ray Rice thing, everything right. that's been going on. So for my character, I asked her. Do you know why he was so abusive to women? Why did he hate women? Or why did he, why he was this way to women? She's like, I don't know. He just beat me. Right. He left me for dead. Like, he raped me. He put a gun to me. It was, it was very graphic. So, for me, I said, well, I need to develop. Because I've never hit a woman. Right. Never. So, I said, I had to, for me, this is you on stage. And we're going to do it for, for, for a film as well. So, I said, well, I had to have it come from a real place. Why this guy did it. Now, he's just like a typical angry man or whatever. So, why did he mm -hmm. do this? And that's, yeah. So, um, so I said, okay. What I'm gonna do with this guy, I say, I say, so for the age of four, developing his backstory, he was abandoned by his mother. His mother mm -hmm. came up to the state, ordered to the state. So his foster parents, the foster mother, mol molested him, and the foster father beat him. So now he has abandonment issues with his mother because she abandoned. So these things wouldn't have happened to him from the age of four to sixteen if she had not abandoned him. So he hates his mother because you left me. And because you left me, this woman has abused me, has molested me, and this guy has beat me, whatever. So he has those type of issues. So anytime it's a female authority figure or somebody threatens to leave him, he these things come out. So mm -hmm. with the with the with with this particular project, uh, the woman who plays my fiance, why I proposed to marry her, and so she's always so happy, she's so giddy, whatever. And she, I'm six three. She's probably like five four, eleven, five five foot. And uh, oh, she's small. yeah, she's very tiny. <laughs> And so, but she's so excited I'm proposing to marry her. So my whole thing is, don't ever leave me. Mm. But she don't understand what the undertone is. Right. Because I have my own abandonment issues. Right. But even though I'm saying I want to marry you, that's a commitment. Don't leave me. So then later on, when she threatens yes. to leave me, mm -hmm. then that's when the abuse starts and he pulls mm -hmm. the gun. I mean, it's, so if I had to come to go to a real place, as right. to answer your question as far as developing characters. So, yeah, absolutely. Do you have any characters that you're looking forward to playing that you would like to play or... Or a character that you've already played in something that you really enjoyed. Well, glad you said that. Uh, what I had I, I've finished doing, which we're actually going to re rebirth, is I played Malcolm X. Oh, nice. Yes, that's. It, it was. It, tell us about this. Well, I love. It was a play that mm. I had done. It was called Duty Calls, and basically it was about. Um, it really was a play. Was about Martin Luther King and how his duty was called for him to be this from going to be a pastor, to be in a civil rights activist, and, and to make all these different laws and changes. And so my scene was just a short scene where Malcolm X went to meet Martin 
for the first time because no one knows what that meeting was like because Martin didn't have his bodyguards there, Malcolm didn't have his bodyguards, so it's just those two. And so yeah, yeah that's why the king right there. So um, it's all a piece of all of everybody's interpretation of what that meeting was like, but everybody knows that Malcolm wasn't that favorable of King because he was teaching the the the, uh, the African Americans to be nonviolent. Mm -hmm. And really, what that says to Malcolm was, you're teaching everybody to be defenseless by saying turn up the cheek. So if I beat you, I do whatever, whatever, turn up the cheek. So Malcolm didn't agree with that, especially especially because his father was killed by the KKK, his uncle was hung. So the turn of the cheek is not something he mm -hmm. was. And you're teaching a whole nation to do this. So Malcolm was going there with that type of uh, uh, confrontational uh, element that he was ready to, to deal with. And so for that, the reason why I love that role because of who he means to us and as society, as a people in, in the world. Um, and just, just uh, well, that's a first and foremost. And then what he means to me, myself, and, and then um, as an actor to portray it. And so I really took it extremely seriously. Like, so I was downloading nothing but information and, 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 and uh, you know, it's just a lot to go. We can go to something, but it, it's a lot that I, I deal with that. Yeah. Looks like we have another question. Okay. Yes, we have a chatter question from Florida. They would like to know, what was it like to work with uh, Martin Lawrence? Lawrence. Martin, actually, it's 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 funny. Martin, f the work with him was great. I heard horror stories of Martin. Maybe <laughs> I, maybe it had been Martin back in the day when he was on the Martin show, like how he was, you know, mean or zero tolerance for different things, or whatever. Or didn't show up or whatever. But we did the movie was called Death at the Funeral, and I was one of the producers on Death at the Funeral. So that's I was actually giving Martin notes in this particular scene. Mar it was Martin Lawrence, Chris Rock, Zoe Zardana, that's me and Chris, and you uh -huh. know, and everything. Um, but Martin was there every day, early. Mm -hmm. No Devo type stuff. If he did his job, came back and forth, whatever it was. But we still had jokes. Went to his, to his uh, he didn't have a trailer, he had a bus. And I had gone inside his, his bus and we talked and we, we talked about various different things. And yeah, it, it, it wasn't what I had heard. You know what I mean? And then, so actually, and then Will Smith came to the set to talk to Martin about doing Bad Boys 3. Oh, nice. So they're they're actually uh, in prepping for that right now as well. So. Cool. Yeah. What's it like being on set? Because you're also an actor. Now you were a producer for that yeah. particular film, and then watching those actors work. Were you learning from that, or what was it like for you? Others oh, will. Torture. It was torture. Torture. Were you like, I want to be in the scene exactly. right now? Exactly. And that's what people don't understand. <laughs> some people don't understand because it's like. That's my passion. That's my obsession mm -hmm. is acting. So to cater or to, 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 to facilitate everybody else is like, <laughs> you know, it really is. And, uh, but because it's such a great group of people, it makes it even worse because everybody is cool. Everybody from Danny Glover to, to everybody just to, to, all the way to um, Peter Dinklage, who's uh -huh. on Game of Thrones. Yeah. I mean, he's, it was a great cast. He's sort of, I want to be a part of this magic. I want to be a part. I want to be in. I'm a part of it. But not really. Side, you like you want to be, be in there to visit. Them. So yeah, it's, it's it's torture. It's like putting a kid in the candy store yeah, and say, "You're the manager of the store, but don't eat no candy." Oh, well, yeah. you put a kid. Uh, at least, did you get to like learn something from observing them? Like, did did the different actors have their own like styles or technique for getting in the scene? I don't know. I don't think so because of this particular film, because it was such a good. Everybody just had fun. Right. They just did it. They just did it. It was it was like no it was it was a comedy so it was no it was really just no fun times. No, it was, yeah, it was just fun. Yeah. It Good just, stuff. Yeah. You're watching Actors Eat Chat Show. We'll be back in just a minute after a word from one of our sponsors. The great thing about NL Media is it's a one-stop shop. We are soup to nuts. We have writers, directors, producers, animators, motion graphics artists, editors, videographers, musicians, all under one roof. And we are a boutique creative house where we actually do the creative at much more affordable price and have the staff in-house to execute it professionally. My name is John Palacio. My name is Luz Montez. My name is Paul Robinson. I am Jesse Cervantes. I'm Curtis Peel. My name is Ben Joran. One of the most common questions we have from potential clients is how does it work? What happens when you engage in now media to create a video, a marketing campaign? It first starts with, you know, obviously having the phone conversation with the client, brainstorm with them to come up with a really good concept and a really good idea to push whatever they're trying to do to the next level. Only with that in mind can we really try to tailor a concept and a script for their exact audience that fits in with their branding and the message they want to tell. I will 
storyboard it out, get a real rough idea uh, of what we want to do. We'll then present the client with a couple of options, the different ways that we could go with some of the things that we've come up with. And they'll say this is good and then we'll come back and we'll start animating that or designing it or editing it. Our clients are generally, you know, like to be really hands-on and we'd like to hear from you kind of all along the board. There's no surprises. What we like to do with every partner is we actually create a page on the EndNow website. So they can give feedback and that way when the time we get to the final product, you know, usually there's not a whole lot more revisions to do because they, we've already been working together the whole time. The big difference is that, that real personal creative touch. We have a creative group that can execute that vision, whether it's animation, video, motion, graphics, and do so with some unique creative that is custom tailored to that business. You know, dream it up. It's video. It's magic. It can happen. You're watching Actors E! Live Chat Show Shot in Hollywood, California. I'm your host, Christina Nichols, with actor-producer Trey Ireland today. And before we dive into patterns of attraction, we have a question from one of our chats. Ah, oh, we do. We have a question from Las Vegas, and they would like to know, do you always dress so sly, so handsome? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 try, I try my best to, to look presentable, you know, uh, that people might like me. <laughs> no, I, I, Here's yeah. a shot when you're not in your suit and tie. That's still intense. Yes. That's that still looks intense. like you, that looks like it's been a while though. Yes. You look younger there. I don't know younger if it's just the shirt. Well, no, like no, no, it looks like somebody in their twenties. No, because like, only because I'm growing clean my face. Shaven, hair. That's what right, it was. Because You've I'm growing I, I'm doing hair. another role, so I'm I'm growing everything. I'm gonna be like Wolfman Jack. This is gonna be like really grizzly looking. Ooh. This is gonna be out here because I'm playing this uh this role. This movie I'm doing called um this movie I'm doing called uh, The Hills. And that starts production in February of 2015. I play this 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 cop who was uh, left for dead, mm -hmm. and um, my my wife didn't want me to be a cop. So when I'm left for dead, she decides to leave me, give me the Jared John letter. Uh -huh. My father was killed, so I'm like really to give up on life. So it's, it's that 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 time period where I just let myself go. And so I'm, that's so we're shooting that sequence first. So I gotta let all this grow out. So I'm like bewildered and and hacked, you know, whatever. So then later on. Something happens where it makes me, you know, have a second chance in life, and I start working out, clean shave again, and I clean on up. So, but right now, I have to go grizzly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grizzly. But if I was to shave right now, I would look just as young as I did oh, on that okay. picture. Yeah, that's just, amazing what facial hair does. Yeah, yeah, and jeans, good jeans. Thanks, parents. Thanks, <laughs> mom and dad. Tell us about patterns of attraction. Patterns of attraction is is is. Uh, <laughs> This movie is going to be the death of me when it comes to the dating scene. Oh! Because <laughs> women automatically, story of my life, have already portrayed and think that I'm a player or a, a playboy or whatever the case would be because I guess they think that I'm decent looking or whatsoever else. And so with this particular movie, my character, uh, his name is Shane, and he has um, a problem with women. That he just can't be satisfied with just one woman. So he's going to see a therapist played by Karen Ward, you know, because he's really trying to seek help. Like, look, I have a problem. I need to have. So he's trying. <laughs> he's doing everything he can. He went to talk to his uncle, who's played by Michael Collier. And Michael Collier is the one who gave him this thing. So then he's just, he can't help it, but he wants to do right. He wants to do right. I feel, Trey, like you might be talking about yourself here, too. See, that's what, see, see, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Because people see them like, oh, that's you, Trey. That's, it. that's what we thought about you. I'm like, no, I'm so far from that. But. As an actor, you have to be able to dive into your characters. I don't know. I was feeling like that was you going, he wants to do better. I do. Like I said, that's why he's going to see a, If you're going to see a therapist, then you're paying money to try to, try to you know, try to, to have some type of healing or whatever. But, yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, so that's who he is. And people, people to this day, I guess uh, the dating thing is, is dwindling. Well, there's no ring on your fingers. So, girls are like. But at the same time, people don't want to be. It, 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 it actually varies. So some women don't want to be a statistic. That's Omar Gooding. That's Cuba Gooding's brother, but he was also in uh, Baby Boy and uh, a few other uh, shows. He's on a show right now called Family Time that comes on TV One. Um, no shirts. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. so women either going to be like, we don't want to be with the masses. We don't want to be a statistic of you being part of your flock. And then some women are like, oh, you got this many women. What are you doing that make 
<laughs> women who want to be with you. Okay, we might have to check that out. So it goes back and forth, but for the most part. When is this coming out? Uh, actually, it just came out on net. It came out in theaters, but now it's on Netflix and Redbox and and uh, and uh, Walmart. So all you right ladies now. can see him without his shirt on. Mm. <laughs> wow! Doing his best to to learn how to be committed. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm working. On, I'm trying, ladies. That's why I'm going to see my therapist. And actually, he does have a breakthrough. If you watch it, you'll see. Oh, uh, looks like. Um, oh, what's happening here? This is a movie called Chocolate City. Um, this is going to be, so that's Robert Rashad, who is the mm -hmm. lead. Matt Barnes is the part in there. Um, D. Ray Davis plays uh, 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 his brother. And then I, and the, and the close friend of the family. And so what this is, is it's a stripper. It's the, it's the male, it's the black version, the urban version of Magic Mike. Oh. There's no one Matthew McConaughey and Shani Tane with you people have seen Magic Mike. Are you going to be dancing? No. I, I, I didn't <laughs> have the, the body for that. So I'm just a friend. Yeah, I'm just there supporting. Just a friend. Yeah, but it, yeah, so that comes out spring of next year. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, they're working on a um, Chocolate City stage play for that as well to take it on, on the road. tour. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah. Are you going to so, be involved in that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but not, still not no stripping. <laughs> 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 but when this movie you have, you have, uh, you have Tyson, uh, Tyson Beffert, you have Michael J. White, Michael J. White, you have Genuine, the singer. Uh, and there's another movie I had done uh, called Holler 2 with, with the great Vanessa Bell Calloway um, and, 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 and uh, Kiki, who was in The Cheetah Girls, and um, she's on another show right now. You're keeping busy. Yeah, I'm working on working. You know, it's, it's a long way to go, so we still got to keep got to keep going. You just get, oh, here's another one, Twisted Path. Twisted Path. Actually, this movie is a, it's a horror movie. That actually, I shot in Italy. Oh, we nice. We shot the whole thing in Italy. So that's How long me. were you guys in Italy? For a month, and it was freezing. <laughs> we were in northern Italy. So we were in uh, Parma, Pellegrino, and then we were in the southern Italy to Sardinia mm -hmm. to finish it. So, yeah. Did you get to have um, travel time? No, to me to really enjoy joy. Mm, no, no, it's all inside. It was a yeah work regiment. So oh. yeah. And this is from. This is armor. Uh, it's a scene for armor, and that's what um, um, Milo. I don't want to mess up his last name, so. So Milo. Milo from Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also was one of the producers on this movie. Um, and this, this, is, is this is where I had met um, Lawrence, Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne, Matt Dillon, Jean Renault from mm -hmm. The Professional. Yes. Um, uh, uh, that must have been fun. It was. A great cast. Like I said, I've been, I've been really lucky and blessed to have to be a, a part of some productions, productions that have been with a really good team of people. Did you ever have a chance to sit down with them and kind of pick their brains, get advice? Yeah, because <laughs> I think about where the setting was. I'm no, like, we, we, okay, we, had, we, had, we, had, we had a round, we had a round table discussion because it's a very masculine movie because there's nothing but men in the in the movie because uh -huh. armored truck and, and whatever. And I was pushing as a producer for more women in the movie, but they wanted to have this testosterone. Oh, thing. you boys, you guys got it so easy. There's always a whole lot more male roles than there are female. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what's happening here? So this is the movie, uh, Breaking Out of Rules, I did with Jamie Foxx. This is an older, older movie. Um, uh, and this is where actually I met Clint Culpepper uh, from Sony Screen Gems, um, who actually who, who mentored me for a producer, which is where I started. I did First Sunday with Ice Cube, Tracy Morgan, Cat Williams, and then Armored, and then Definite Funeral. So it's because meeting him through Jamie, because uh, Jamie and I are really good friends, mm -hmm. and I was just there on the set with him, uh, I actually had a s small role in Breaking Out of Rules uh, on top of it. And then I met the president of the company. So that's what it transcended from that to learning producing to be a nice. producer. Yeah. And did you instigate that? Did you ask for assistance? No, or? no, no, no. At the, at the time, we were just trying to punch up the script because Fox is a comedian. We had the, the, the script itself. But to make it funnier, we were just thinking of ways that we could make it funnier. And so I was as Fox's friend, knowing his comedy, was coming up with different ideas, and the president of the studio loved that idea. He was like, do you ever think about producing? Cause I started thinking about different casting choices, whatever. I was like, mm -hmm. well, eventually, but right now, I'm, I'm focused on acting. He was like, no, 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 you need to, you have a talent, man. You should mm -hmm. learn to produce it. So long story short on that, he has given me his card, told me to come and uh, talk to him if I was serious about learning to produce it, and that's what I did. So for about three or four years, I was interned at Sony Screen Gems and, and just learning. So in 2008, that's when I had gotten my shot to co-produced the first movie which was nice. with Ice Cube. When you were um, focusing on producing did you still have an opportunity to do acting? I did. Well, it, or did, I, did, I did acting kind of take a I snuck to do that because yeah. Clint's thing was you had to do one or the other. You see. But the mm -hmm. passion and obsession was like 
Okay, I'm gonna do whatever you say, but I'm still gonna yeah, go because so I have to. You have to fulfill. If you if you're a true artist, you have to feed that. No, you get bored and you're like, I need to create. I need to. I need to act in something. And if it's your passion, else. you feel like the, the more days you spend not doing it, you're dying. And that's mm. how I feel like I need to. Even though I know this is for the longevity of it all, I have to do this. Right. Even but it was worth doing. Um, Absolutely. Being a producer. Okay. Question from the one. That yes, started. Canada. Thank you so much for joining us. We know it's so cold there right now. It's too cold. Too I cold. Know, like thirty below, forty below. <laughs> Yikes! But they want to know. Any audition hints? I mean, you get all these roles. What can you share as far as helping people with auditions? The main thing with, with auditions is, first and foremost, know your material. And so many times, on both sides of the camera, um, especially as a producer, when I, I, I go to an a audition or have a, a casting call, and we see so many actors that don't know their lines. Mm. N at least know your lines and then don't be afraid to ask questions because a lot of times which I do dislike is that as actors we just get the sides meaning just the scene that they want you to audition for so you really have no idea who this character is what's going on in the previous scenes so don't be afraid to control your audition and say hey yeah I got the size so can I ask you more about this character who is he because you already have you should have already developed in your mind who this person is because you don't know and then see if you on point with them because they're still they're looking for something find out what they're looking for if they say well let's just see what you can do then do that but for the most part ask those questions but more importantly know your stuff mm -hmm. it's okay if you had a paper there because a lot of times they 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 it's good to to because you should come on there all book without the paper it shows it's the best you can do Right, right. You always so, want to have your so paper. So have the paper, but know your stuff, but just mm -hmm. have the paper so you, like, it may seem like you don't know it all. Because right. if you're doing it like that, they're like, okay, this must be the best you got. So, uh, you know, but my main thing is know your material and don't be afraid to ask questions. Good advice. Yeah. Actor, producer. Toronto, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a really good weather. It's crazy. It's December. You can't beat LA. You no. cannot beat, well, in Miami. I just left Miami. So Miami was like 80 something degrees Ooh. there. And so it was very nice in Miami. So yeah. That's why people go south for the winter or the West Coast. Yeah. You're watching Actors Eat Chat Show. We'll be back in just a minute after a word from our sponsors. Yes. Have you been waiting for a simple and cost effective alternative to ISDN? No need to wait any longer. Introducing IPDTL from InQuality. IPDTL is a revolutionary yet easy to use web page which uses Chrome to stream audio to and from anywhere on earth. Well, audio quality with IPDTL is equivalent to yet far less expensive than ISDN and with no connection charges. No proprietary hardware or software needed. Just download the Chrome browser and use it. To find out more and to get a free account for your station, go to IPDTL.com. IPDTL is perfect for radio stations and voice talent alike, and can work anywhere in the world. Well, anywhere with the internet, that is. It's here. Go to IPDTL.com and sign up today. IPDTL, the game changer you've been waiting for. IPDTL is an amazing new technology. In fact, go right now to IPDTL.com forward slash AE and there you'll find out how you can get rid of your ISDN, how you can do live television broadcast in full HD and it's very cost effective. We've been using it for pioneering new technology with our broadcast out of Istanbul on Actors eChat. Go there right now. Welcome back to Actors E Chat Show. This is our last segment with actor producer Trey Ireland. So, if you chatters have any more questions, now's the time to get them in. Trey, <laughs> we've talked about so much, but I feel like there's always something else. There's always something else. There's else. always something else. And I really love hearing about that yeah, transition from acting to producing, that mm. little learning more about that yeah. end. And, um, oh, love that girl. Sorry, Tatiana Ali. Tatiana Ali, that's 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 big little sis. Uh, she, people know her more familiar with her from uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. She yeah. played Ashley on that show. So now she has her own TV show called Love That Girl. Comes on TV One, and I'm her brother-in-law on the show. So I'm married to her, her sister. So. Oh. 
That's yeah. currently airing? Yes. Right now? Uh, you have a couple of so things happening right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying yeah. to do as much as I can. That's Plus why I'm the always film work. Working what? on work and the stage plays. When do plays. you take time to sit back and it's breathe? No time for that. It's no time. Because <laughs> it's still a long way to go for me. It's still a long way to go. Looks like we do have a question yeah. from the chatter. Yes, we do have a question. You know, you're, you've been in a lot of things. They've gone to your IMDb page. That's the Internet Movie Database to see um, all these credits that are not theater but film and TV. You meet lots of famous people. That's kind of a special life to have. Uh, what do you feel about that? The way I feel about having people is it's is, 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 is a deal with me because I feel they're my peer group. I have never have been starstruck by anybody because I feel like this is – who I am, I'm, I'm with. It. So the ingenious of just being with these different people, mm -hmm. I just always, um, I, it's a belonging type of thing. So, it, it, but the thing is, they're relatable. Is that they don't have to accept me. So the difference is when I step back and look at myself, like, so why am I friends with Jimmy Fox? Why am I friends with the, the, the head of Sony? Why am I head friends with this person? This person? What is it about me? So it's something within me as well that allows them to be like because they can easily cut you off like okay it's good meeting yeah, you yeah. and keep it moving mm -hmm. so I, I like even with will like there's a lot of people who i have met and befriend that i still keep in contact with like you know so even with will swift so we play chess whatever he hates to lose um <laughs> but it, it's it's it <laughs> that was from uh the last stand uh with uh honor schwarzenegger and yeah i just i just the company that you, you want to be around your peers, which you what you want to do, and just it's good to be accepted by these 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 people mm -hmm. who are already established as well. So I just love it. I love it. <laughs> 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 I was gonna ask you something, but last time, it, we, luckily we talked about it during commercial break. Um, <laughs> just uh, what is it, Christina? What's going on, Christina? Let's see. How about some final words of advice for our viewers, either from your own personal advice and based on all your experiences and all the people you've talked to in Hollywood? What What would you like to say for The our main thing I would say is whatever you're doing, whatever, especially if you're doing this business, whatever it is, just commit to it. Commit to it. I don't care if you're working at Home Depot and, you know, you want to establish to be a manager. You have to commit to whatever that job description is. Do it to the fullest. Uh, with acting is is, is is commitment. It's like it's like don't think that you're too much for this role or too that for that role. I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that. It's like if you go that's what you want to do, you have to commit to whatever it is. So is it really about commitment and then and like I said, and then knowing your material. Question for uh -oh. the chatter is so you ever do any modeling? I have actually I have done modeling. I haven't done it in a while, which I would. Uh, I, oh uh, yeah, you have. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I modeled for you for Hugo Boss uh, back in the day. Uh, um, uh, done a lot of fashion shows. Uh, me and my boy uh, Sam Serpong, who mm -hmm. is one of the Sam's the been on the show. Huge international uh, model. We've done shows together. So um, yeah, I like modeling. I like modeling as well. Easy money. You just sit around or, or walk. You don't a have catwalk. to memorize lines. You don't do it. You just walk a catwalk, and then you just have and that's to look Sam. Good. That's my boy Sam. We know Sam for like 11, 12 years. Great guy. Um, oh, so you actually do catwalks too? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And that, like I said, that's easy because you it's catwalk is about the presence. And you, what you're doing, you're you're really just selling the material that you have on. So if you're comfortable and confident, whatever you're wearing, you have a good presence. The catwalk is nothing. You get paid for that. And then they give you the clothes if, if you know if it's that kind of company. They're like, well, we want you to want you to sponsor you, so you can't go wrong like, with thank that. Thank you. Yeah. What was one of the best items you've received for free? A Hugo Boss suit. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it was like a two thousand dollars suit that he just had, he was you know had given me, and it was wonderful. So you like fashion? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I work on it. <laughs> I work on it. You don't need a stylist. I, I well because I actually I do because I want to I want I feel I feel like I can wear almost anything, but I don't have the creative mindset to to put things together to put like this color with that color and things that might seem unorthodox to make it a nice ensemble. I don't I don't have that talent. You put this together. It's simple. It's blue on blue. <laughs> <laughs> but I was well, like, somebody some might go ahead and get a pink this and then a purple that and this and that. I'm like. Huh? That kind of works. Like, if you look at that, we saw that picture from the last stand. I didn't dress myself for that. That was my, I actually had a stylist from that last stand when I had the bow tie and, and the suit. I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess this can work. You can, Sometimes you learn things when you're working on set and you have someone else put clothes together. Oh, 
that's a good idea. And see, once, once again, with commitment, no matter what it is, I don't care if it's a paper bag, if you commit to it like the emperor's clothes, you walk out there with your confidence that whatever, whatever it is, is you have on. That's why when I see people like, why are they wearing that? They're confident, but they, they don't care what you think. Mm -hmm. So if you're confident you commit to wherever it is, then... And it is good. Let's take a look at some of your websites so people can follow you and become your friend. Well, that's Facebook. the, that's the IMDb. IMDb where it shows some of the works that I have done and things that I are potentially working on. And um, the stuff that's coming up. And, and here's your Facebook. It's Facebook. So it's just Trey Ireland, T-R-A-E-I-R-E-L-E-N-D. Mm -hmm. And that is a regular page. And then there's also the, the friend page. I don't say fan, but the friend yeah, page. Yeah, I don't like. Or business page. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they can always go to that as well. Um, and, and Twitter, Twitter is, is my name, Trey Ireland, and the number three uh, at the end. And then also for, for Instagram is Trey Ireland, and number three. And then YouTube is Trey Ireland. So your name, and oh, there's me. And there's Christina. There's Christina. Christina. And my MTV needs uh, help. You look good. So you look like yours. <laughs> and I have my Facebook and Twitter if anyone's interested in following. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm interested. Oh, <laughs> I got one more. And then um, we're going to be back in just a minute. You guys, take a look at this segment to learn a little bit more about Actors E-Chat Show. That's right. Hi, I'm Alexis Nichols, one of your Actors Entertainment hosts. Here's a big hug and thank you for joining us on Actors E-Chat. We are now almost 6 million viewers in Chatter Strong from all over the world, and we really appreciate you. Actors Eat Chat shoots live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time from the Pepper J Production Studio below the Hollywood sign in Hollywood, California. Want to see all of today's episode or any other of our other episodes? Please visit ActorsEntertainment.com and put the talent's name in the search box. And go ahead and visit Actors Entertainment on IMDb.com. That's the Internet Movie Database to see more than 1,200 entertainment industry professionals who have been guests on Actors E-Chat. And social media is so important, so follow Actors Entertainment on Twitter. Our handle is at Actors Entertain. And join us on Facebook at Actors Entertainment Fan Page. And don't forget to like us. Those likes really help out. Stay tuned for our Actors Reporter Animation, which won Best Animation at the Telly Awards. Great job in Now Media and Pepper J Productions, and terrific singing by Melissa Suzanne. And now, a special thank you to today's guest. Welcome back to Actors E Chat Show. This is our final segment here today with Trey Ireland. And we are going to take a look at his reel, and he's going to tell us about all these different parts he's played. Well, this is Cleaver. This is on uh, Netflix right now, Redbox and, and uh, Walmart, whatsoever. Uh, just me coming home and dealing with my, my family. I was, I'm, you know, and that's, <laughs> that's me playing a nerd. I was like, that's and awesome. This crazy little glasses. dude is a uh, thing that we did. So, yeah, it's just, just showing the versatility, going mm -hmm. from one thing to the, to the nerd thing to the, to the next. I like the nerd thing. This is a play I did called The Fool and His Money with Eddie Griffin and Mike Beats. Did you say play? Yeah. That's yeah, so it's tape footage it's, for a yeah, play. it's tape it's tape for uh for TV. It's been on BT Centric oh, okay. and whatever. Yeah. So on DVD right now. Nice. Also it's also on Netflix as well. So I was the bad guy, obviously. <laughs> 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 There's something's going on here with me jacking up this little kid. <laughs> Dust him off. He's okay. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> well, opposite of the nerd. So right. we always gotta show yeah, he's a drug that I mean, I'm reel. giving him drugs to sell for me. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh and this is thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. Um, where everybody has gone crazy, and, and I'm trying to save my daughter. I'm going back looking for my daughter, so I'm getting into it with. He's actually my, was my friend, and then turned crazy. So this is love that girl. This is with Tatiana from uh -huh. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. This is her own TV show that she nice. has comes on TV One, and uh, this is actually my introduction. That's Fawn Chambers who plays my my uh, fiance. This is a movie called Hollywood that I did. This is um, in Paris. Um, and she's like the Tina Fey of of there, and and the oh, guy's cool. like the the uh, Stephen Carell. And this is Hollywood. This is Hollywood the horror movie that, that I have done. That's actually on Netflix as well right now. Yeah. Okay. So this is P twenty one seven pimp standing for a pimp paper in my pocket. This is when I played the crackhead. That's Gary Sturgis. Um, at this point in time, I'm not in a good situation. <laughs> and that's the end. That was um, so wait, wait. Oh, I was like getting him up. Yeah, how so long is your reel? A couple, how many minutes? Just two like, minutes. Because the cast writers get really bored. Yeah, got to keep it. Yeah. A lot of variety going on. Yeah. Um, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today, it's Trey. It's been a pleasure, yes. So nice talking to you. And everybody, keep in touch with them through on Facebook and other social media connections. Yes. That's the great thing about social media. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And we'll see you next time on Actor Z Live Chat Show. Bye. <laughs> What's that? Actor Z Chat Show? Happens to be my favorite in the morning. I want nothing but a cup of coffee, a bottle of Kahlua, six naked girl. Wait, no, that's not right. Actor Z Chat Show. Thanks for joining us on Actor Z Chat. Remember to visit ActorZ.com and enjoy all your past Actors E-Chat episodes with celebrity favorites. Look in the search box to find who you're looking for. Actors E has had over 1,300 entertainment celebrity guests and over 6 million viewers worldwide. Join us every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Thank you for watching Actors E-Chat, live from Hollywood. Actors E-Chat is a co-production of Pepper J Productions and Live Video Inc., a Kirk Kelly company. All rights expressly reserved in all formats. Thanks for watching. Oh my gosh, hey big Hollywood starlet that just happens to be walking by. Yes? I'm not from around here, but I want to be an actress just like you. What do I need to know? Kid, let me tell you, whether you're a seasoned pro or a naive newbie like you, there's one thing you need to know. To get my first job, I lived in a slum, beat out 50 other girls to play a drunk bum. I cried. My first agent charged me 30%, Thanks. working three jobs and I couldn't pay rent, but I'm an actor. She's an actor. A shark nod my leg on a B film in Sydney to pay for the stitches. I sold my left kidney. I finally made a union. Their rules were complex. Their piles of paperwork fogged up my specs. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. I'm an actor. Well, that's rather disturbing. But what's the one thing I need to know? Don't listen to the critics, don't follow all the tabs Forget that sleazy photog and the agent that's got cramps Go to Actors Reporter Actors Reporter Actors Learn the tricks and the secrets without all the sweat and info one-stop shop, it's free and on the net. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. ActorsReporter.com. So how can they help her? Career cues, union news, makeup woes, advice from pros, insurance tips, choosing scripts, everything at your fingertips. Actors Reporter. Got a call back. I'll do it. Yay! Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm Mary Jo Gruber. Thanks for joining us on Actor Z Live Chat Show. I'm just one of your Actor Z hosts, but as you can see, I'm also the Actor Z Live video editor, which means that I'm here even when you don't see me. Actor Z is here to chat with you Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Hollywood Time, as I like to call it. Our guests include actors, directors, producers, writers, singers, comics, and others that are all in the entertainment industry. You can see previous shows at www.actorsentertainment.com, and be sure to check out our guest index to find your favorite celebrities. See you next time. I'm working.